When we go out to clubs or parties, we never think about the danger. We just assume the night will go smoothly and we'll head home with nothing more than great memories. But for the young people who went out to celebrate at the Ozum Disco Club in Quezon City, Philippines in 1996, the night took a devastating turn. Their night of fun turned into one of the deadliest fires in history. Most of the victims were fresh high school and college graduates, full of life and promise. But within minutes, everything changed. Before we dive into the details of that night, think about this. How many times have you gone out to a club or concert and just gotten lost in the moment? The music's loud, the lights are flashing, you're with your friends, and the vibe is all about fun. We never really think about the safety in those moments, do we? You walk into a packed club, maybe it's a bit hard to move, but you brushed it off because it's all part of the night out. You're not really looking around for the emergency exits or worrying about how many people are squeezed into the room. All you're focused on is having a good time, dancing, laughing, and just being in the moment. It's a situation we've all been in before. But what would happen if things took a turn? The lights went out, a fire broke out. Would you know where to go? It's something we don't think about until suddenly it's too late. That's what makes the story of the Ozone Disco Fire so tragic. The mid-90s was an exciting time, especially for students. Graduation season was in full swing, and parties were happening everywhere. For students back then, clubs were the place to be, and Ozone Disco was the spot. On March 18, 1996, the club located in Quezon City, Philippines, was packed. Over 350 people inside most of them young, fresh out of high school, with some college students as well. Most of them were between the ages of 16 and 25. They just finished school, the world is at their feet, and they're just celebrating the next chapter of their life. The energy that night must have been electric. The flashing lights, the thumping bass, the 90s dance music, and the crowd moving in sync on the packed dance floor. The smell of sweat, drinks, and excitement in the air. Friends laughing, toasting their futures, and taking photos that would later become their last. The club had opened in 1991 and quickly became a go-to spot for young people. It had everything. Flashy lights, a big dance floor, and a DJ spinning the latest hits. That night, everyone was just in the moment. Having the time of their lives, celebrating their achievements, and looking forward to the future. But beneath all that fun and excitement were safety hazards no one paid attention to. The building was poorly maintained, and like many clubs, the focus was on maximizing capacity for profit. Most of the party goers didn't realize they were walking into a death trap. As the night wore on, the energy in the club remained high. The music was loud, the drinks were flowing, and the dance floor was packed. But just after midnight, the unimaginable happened. At first, it was just a spark near the DJ booth. Some thought it was part of the show, special effects maybe. That spark quickly turned into flames. The foam panels on the walls, which were meant to absorb sound, were highly flammable. As the fire began to spread, it was as if the walls themselves were igniting. The smell of smoke filled the air. People on the far side of the club began to notice something was wrong, but the music kept playing, and for a few moments everything seemed fine. But then the heat started to rise and the fire spread quickly. People began to panic as the flames started to climb the walls, spreading faster than anyone could react. One moment they're dancing, lost in the music, and the next they're fighting for their life. Thick black smoke starts filling the room, the lights go out and the once bright and vibrant club is plunged into darkness. You hear the music stop, replaced by the sounds of screams. You can barely see the person in front of you, and all around you people are pushing, trying to escape. The main exit was tiny, just four feet wide, and it opened inwards. Hundreds of people rushed toward it at once, desperate to escape. But the crowd was too thick, 
and the door became blocked almost instantly. People were crushed against each other, trapped as the flames closed in. The air was filled with screams, some calling out for loved ones they could find, others crying in sheer agony as their skin and clothes ignited in the blaze. The heat was unbearable, the air thick with smoke, and the sound of crackling flames mixed with frantic, desperate voices. For many, the exits were locked. Some tried to push through windows, breaking the glass with their bare hands, while others were trapped in the crush of people near the door. One survivor, J.P. Nepomucino, said he first thought the flames were part of the club's special effects, until he realized the fire was spreading too fast. I saw people trying to get out, but the door wouldn't open. I thought, this is it. We had to break a window to escape, and even then, not everyone made it through. Another survivor, Divina Jose, described the sheer panic of that moment. She said, The smoke filled the room so quickly that you couldn't even see your own hands in front of you. People were screaming, grabbing at each other, trying to push through. The heat was unbearable. She remembers the screams of people begging for help as they burned alive. I'll never forget those sounds, she said. Divina recalled, One second we were laughing, dancing, and the next, everything was chaos. You couldn't breathe, you couldn't see. People were pushing from every direction, and I thought, this is it, we're not getting out. JP, who escaped through the window, lost several friends that night. He later said, I can still smell the burning flesh, and the image of my friends trapped inside will never leave me. For survivors like him and Divina, the memories of that night are impossible to forget. There were so many stories like theirs, some people made it out, but many didn't. The lucky ones were those who were closest to the exits when the fire started. Those trapped farther inside never had a chance. By the time the fire was out, 162 people lost their lives. Most of them were young, in their teens or early 20s. They had gone out to celebrate, not knowing their night would end in one of the worst tragedies in Philippine history. Firefighters described the scene as hellish. Bodies were piled near the exits, many fused to the walls from the heat. The next day, the entire country was in shock. Families gathered outside the burned out shell of the club, hoping for news about their loved ones. Many waited for hours, hoping for a miracle that never came. The images of charred bodies stacked near the doors haunted the nation. Parents who had sent their children off to celebrate their graduation were now identifying the remains. Investigations revealed that Ozone had a long history of safety violations, faulty wiring, blocked exits, and severe overcrowding. The club was recommended to have a max capacity of 35 to 50 people. That night, there were over 300. Despite warnings, nothing had been done. The club's owners and some local officials were eventually charged, but it took years before they were convicted. By then, it didn't matter to the families who had lost their loved ones. 162 young lives were gone forever. Imagine you're a parent, a sibling, or a friend, and you hear about the fire. You rush to the club, hoping and praying your loved one made it out. But as the hour passed, your hope fades. The bodies keep coming out, and you realize the chances are slim. For survivors, the trauma of that night still lingers. One firefighter said, It was like walking into a nightmare. People were huddled together, frozen in their last moments, trapped with no way out. JP shared that even though he escaped, he still wakes up from nightmares, relieving the horrors of being trapped in the club. The ozone disco fire wasn't just a tragedy. It was a wake-up call. After that night, the government cracked down hard on fire safety regulations, especially in places like clubs, bars, and restaurants. New laws were passed on fire exits, crowd capacity, and building inspections, and they were enforced more strictly. It became mandatory for establishments to have fire extinguishers, sprinklers, and proper emergency exits. But for the family who lost their children, these changes came far too late. Justice for the victims dragged on for years. It wasn't until 2014, 
a full 18 years after the fire that the club's owners and local officials responsible for safety inspections were convicted of reckless imprudence resulting in multiple deaths and injuries. For many families, the delayed justice was bittersweet. This isn't just a story from the past. It's a reminder for all of us to demand better safety standards and to be aware of the spaces we enter. The next time you walk into a crowded club, take a second to notice the exits because those moments can mean the difference between life and death.